We're going to talk all about foundation sticks today, which one wins, what's my favorite, all of the things. So stick around and let's dive into the roundup. Here we go. So I have tried thousands of products over the past six years and I provide honest reviews over here. Also, you have a better idea of what to buy and what not to buy. No one has paid me to say the following. You can check out the in-depth reviews for the four foundation sticks that I'm going to cover today back on thestyleshaker.com. Without further ado, let's kick it off. The most expensive option. I'm also going to show you demos and swatches and stuff like that so you can see it. And then I might just start playing with makeup because it's kind of my way. This is from Westman Atelier. This is the foundation stick that is approximately $68. For 0.31 ounces, I'm going to talk about which one has the most product for the least amount of money, value, things like that. 21 shades available. So far, this is the least amount of product for the most money. <laughs> is uh, not winning any awards on the value front, but this is meant to be luxury, high-end, yada, yada, yada. So, this had the most shades available. It didn't have a lot of darker skin tone shades on there. So that could be a huge determining factor if price is not already a deal breaker. The sticks have tendencies to have a weirder finish for my skin because it's a heavier, creamier foundation. I have found ones that work and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But this one is more heavy. I have shade four on this. It skews a little bit yellow, so this started to oxidize for me. This is supposed to be a combination concealer and foundation. A lot of these are multi-purpose, so that's great, but I probably would not use this as both. It's hard to get a foundation stick that you would use as both if you want brightening under the eye, right? And then you want coverage on the face that doesn't look too bright. This is very, very creamy. See, and now I want to like just apply it live on, on my face, which is sad because I really like the foundation situation that I'm using here, but Air Perez foundation, one of my all-time favorites. But you know, for the sake of you, we're just gonna, we'll do a quick application. Sad, that really was a good, that was a good application today. We're just gonna use the right cheek. It's gonna get a lot of use. So what I noticed was, in terms of application here, it is very creamy. It's a little on the heavier side out of all of these different foundation sticks and not in a great way. It's just not something that my skin works super well with. It also looks a little heavy and like not a skin looks like skin finish. So with all of these, I just take a lightweight oil and then this has been my hack. Or you can use a primer. I prefer to not use a primer. That is a personal call. Usually they have silicones in them and they irritate my skin. So this is the way I go. And then I have the Fit Glow Teddy Brush. And you would think that adding oil on top of something that's already dense would really not be a good idea. And yet it really helps it distribute on my skin. Oily skin types, you already have it. Nature gave you that oil, so you're good. This is drier skin, I would say combination skin. So you can see it's oxidized a little bit. Barely touch the top of the foundation stick and then I buff it off a little bit into the back of my hand. And then here's the thing. <laughs> Normally I press, this just seems really fussy and I get that. Application can really change a product and it's worth playing with. That's the message I hope you can take away here. And this, this like light swirling worked so much better for my skin than pressing. Pressing just ended up with kind of this glowy, settling into pores situation. So this to me feels more of like a buffing action. It also distributes less product. So back to the whole, it's a little bit heavier, creamier on my skin. Some people might absolutely love that. If you've tried any of these and you've really, really found what works for you, or you really have a different opinion than my own, please share it below. This is just one person's opinion, somebody who's tried like way too much makeup probably more than a human should so i would love to see that in the comments just let us know your skin type and what ended up working for you that works that gets to a decent finish for me so i was really happy to discover that so you could see that redness went away pretty quickly i'm not sure if the advantages outweigh the disadvantages on this one for me Scorecard score on this was a 12 out of 20, mainly for finish, and then the wear test wasn't the best, I believe, so on to the next. This is a newer option that I recently did a full dedicated review on. This is from a brand called OG. I'm sure you've probably heard of it at this point. I have shade Linden 1.75, 
And this brand is really all about the ingredients, really, really high quality ingredients. 20 shades available here, so pretty close to the Westman Atelier. 64 buckaroos for 0.34 ounces. You're getting a little bit more for a little bit less. We like that. I also have a promo code for this. It's BritWitkin15 with an underscore in the middle, so you can check that out if you want to save a few bucks. And I'm trying their other contour sticks, their blush stick and their bronzer stick and their highlighter stick. All the sticks, they were kind enough to send it to me. The Westman Atelier I purchased. The OG was gifted by PR. I was under zero obligation to review it over here, but I want you to know because we're all about transparency on this channel. I will not bury the lead. Score was a 13 out of 20 here. The reason that I got a couple of notches down was mainly for the finish. It wasn't the worst finish of the bunch, but I'll dive into just a few highlights. So really focusing on ingredients and sourcing. I would say that this was a lighter weight formula compared to the Westman. It did not oxidize quickly on me. You get plenty on the brush whenever you kind of dip it on top of that stick. And then there is coconut oil in here. This does have plastic packaging. Westman has plastic in their packaging. The eco-friendliness is not winning on either of those. In terms of packaging, in terms of sourcing, different story on the OG. The finish that I found to be kind of interesting here, so this I could press in. The coverage was really nice and it didn't kind of settle into pores. That's kind of the advantage. Like a lot of people apply foundation sticks or you'll see them on social media and they're applying them straight to their face and then just sort of blending it in. Do it however works for you. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I always like to say like, you know, like if it works for you, great. Try the oil trick. If it doesn't work, that's okay. But again, let us know in the tips or in the comments what your tips are. The wear test on this one was really interesting. So decent coverage. It did start gathering a little bit around the nose. It really started to diminish. Like the finish wasn't as smooth and beautiful by the end of the day. However, when I built product on top of it, it looked really, really good. The finish would actually improve the more that I would apply on top. I don't know why. What was going on there? Powders cream bronzers, gel blushes. It just sort of works really well with other products. Some alchemy magical stuff was happening there. So the OG stick, I really like. There is one that is less expensive that I like a little bit more. I'm gonna talk about that last, but if I were against the Westman and the OG, I would personally pick the OG. If you disagree and you're like Westman all the way, let us know. Or if you're thinking, I cannot stand foundation sticks, I would rather use something else as a cream foundation. I'm going to mention something that I really love at the end, but let us know that too. It's a whole community here. That's the whole point. It's not just me, you know, talking about stuff, although it is a lot of me talking about stuff. The next, I really kind of don't want to apply and that says sort of everything. This is the Merit Foundation Stick. It's a concealer, multitasker. It's marketed that way. It has a very interesting packaging or like shape. It's a smaller stick, can get into corners, has its advantages but the disadvantages outweigh the advantages on this one for me. So this is the lowest price point at $38. You do get less product in here, so 0.29 ounces. 20 shades available, so best value, I suppose, but yeah, anyway, let's dive in. You can use this to spot treat. You can use any of them to spot treat, okay. I have shade bisque in this. I purchased this the first time, then the brand sent it to me afterwards. Uh, again, under no obligation to review. So this has dimethicone in it. It also has coconut oil derivatives, I believe. Coconut oil derivatives, not the same thing as coconut oil. Cocoa caprolate, anything like that, most of the time they use a coconut oil derivative. Some people want to know that. Some people are like, TMI. They do have a strong shade range. They have 20 shades. It gave light to medium coverage. Again, I'm like, I don't want to do it. But something about this formula just clung to dry patches for me. For spot treatment, I think it did a decent job, but it sat on top more than others and didn't wear as well. But the coverage here was really nice. It was just that finish. If you have drier skin, this may not be the way for you. If you have oily skin, this could be a nice option. I mean, really just pressing it in on top of the other products. This skin is very primed. Like when I work with my skin and apply like this, it gets a little plump, it gets a little bouncy, and it kind of works better with product I find in these videos, as opposed to when I'm just sitting here getting ready in the morning, it's a little bit different. I will say this probably gives more of a matte finish than the other products that I've tried. OG doesn't give a ton of glow, but it there's life there. 
Westman, it just too too creamy shiny for me for some reason that's just how it sits on my skin i use this more as spot treatment on the face than i do all over the face so that's what i've wanted to do with it since i have it and i want to you know actually use the thing i actually keep always hitting this on the cap i know that's a little nothing thing to note but i have knocked off more product than i care to talk about just because of that design. So it drives me nuts, but that's a personal thing. If we do a quick little recap here, right? We have the West Mint, not my favorite, a little bit heavier. The Merit clings a little bit more to dry patches, just looked a little bit more dry on my skin. Oily skin types or people who just want to spot treat might like this. And it's a lower price point than all of the above. Also has better shade range. And then you have the OG, wonderful ingredients, really, really nice all around. This would probably be the one that I wrapped up with and said, hey, out of the three, this is the one that I would choose. And then I tried the Zao foundation stick. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you've seen me testing this and talking about it because it feels kind of fun to like walk you guys through my testing process and method. So it's not scientific. I just basically put it on my face and then I'm like, hmm, maybe it works like this. Maybe it works like this. So the Zao foundation stick very lightweight and silky. Oh, by the way, the Merit received a 14 out of 20 on the scorecard. Not the worst, not the best. So the Zao foundation stick, $44 for 0.35 ounces. That's the most product that we have in this entire list. I have shade 774. The shade range is not that great. 14 shades, they don't run super dark. They run more on the light side. I also want to note this is the most sustainable packaging. Really strong ingredients in terms of they're covering all the certifications that you want to see when you're buying things like Cosmo certified, cruelty free vegan, all that stuff. While refills are available, they are kind of hard to find. The Zao site is a little bit tricky to navigate. So just putting it out there, there are refills available. It is the most sustainable or eco-friendly option, but that site is really tricky to navigate and I don't know how you do it for the US. You can do it for other countries, but it's tricky to buy through. Ingredients it here looked really great until I found fragrance and parfum. So I reached out to the brand and I had to do it a couple times. The response time was slow. They finally got back to me about the ingredients, gave me a little bit of a runaround, you know, like proprietary blend, which I understand. Finally said, and I have this on the scorecard back on the site, that there is natural vanilla extract in here and it's supposed to cover up some oil scents that are in there, very, very faint. So you're not getting anything overwhelming. Silky, smooth, lightweight, really beautiful coverage. I don't wanna build this up too much. It gets to be a little too much if I build, but overall it's winning on the performance parts. The wear test was okay, but you're seeing not a lot of glow here. So it's not shiny, it's not dewy, it's not matte, it's not heavy. It's sort of like the Goldilocks winner of all of these. This is the one that beat out OG for me in terms of finish. I think that this would work really well for spot treatment if I needed it and just pressed it in because it's so silky and lightweight. Anything that I put on top of this one also worked very, very well. Out of the four that I talked about, Zao seems to be edging the others out. I wish the refills were more easily available. It does have drawbacks. It doesn't have the best shade range. It is a little bit more expensive than Merit. It does work really nicely on my skin. And then I would encourage you to look through all the other ingredients because what works for one may not work for another. I do have some honorable mentions that I wanted to throw in here just in case you're still looking and you're like, I don't know if I wanna deal with these foundation sticks. They sound fussy. Got it. In terms of cream foundation that is also very sustainably packaged and all the rest of it, some of you are going to probably guess that I'm going to talk about this, but I have the Mob Beauty Blurring Foundation. This stuff is beautiful. Applies really nicely. It does a wonderful job and it's been on Brit's Picks out of the thousands of products that I have tried. Those are the top 20 currently that I would buy again and again and again. Sometimes I go over 20 because I cannot edit myself. This sucker has been on there for a very long time for a good reason. If you have tried this, let us know in the comments. The other one I want to mention, which is just kind of getting back up there, is from Jones Road. This is their face pencil, and I also have their new neutralizer pencil, which I will talk about if you would like to see that. Comment below and let me know. Yes, I want to see it. Talk about the neutralizer pencil. What does it even make? So I've reviewed the face pencils in the past, but the face pencil, what I tend to do here is apply it to my finger. I don't usually go direct to face 
and then I can just press it into skin, primed skin key for me. And it targets really nicely without a lot of creasing. That was just under the eye. And this is shade seven and it's a pencil and we love that. I think that's pretty great option to also look into. Those are two options actually that you might wanna look into. Different pricing, a little bit more approachable for some people. And I do have reviews for both that you can check out so you can contrast and compare. So which one are you gonna pick? What are you gonna pick? Are you not gonna pick either of them? Are you gonna pick all of them? Are you like, I don't even care about foundation sticks anymore. I want the face pencil. Still on the hunt for foundations. I totally understand that can be the trickiest category. So you can check out all of the foundation reviews that I've done over here over the past six years. They are on this playlist. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this roundup helpful, don't forget to take two seconds and hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already for more absolutely honest reviews. And I will see you right back here real soon. Until then.